What about the patient in the bed? So because of all the hubbub and everything else, I, I walked in and said, hello, princess. She never even heard me. So I went, well, that's a great start, God. <laughs> you know? So I thought, now what do I do? I know. I'll quote scripture. It says, it says in, in, in the New Testament that Jesus put them all out. So I thought, great, I've got scriptural preference. I threw the whole lot out of our hospital room. Yeah, I did. Please close the door from the other side. Just left mom, her sister, Joanna and myself in there, and Sophia out. Now I could think. Now she, now she could hear. So, so I, I held her hand and I said, hi, princess, how are you? She said, I'm okay. She didn't look it. So I said, what's going on? So we talked for a little while. I said, well, let's, they've asked me to come and pray, so let's pray. Let's see what the Lord would want to do. And I often lose it here. I managed to hold it on Tuesday. But I have to separate my emotion from what actually happened. I held this bony little hand. And I started to close my eyes because it was easier for my faith. And I, start, and I started to pray. And I don't know how long I'd gone. And the Lord, the Lord took the veil back from heaven and released his raw, pure, undiluted passion for Sophia for five seconds. It hit me so hard that I started to go out backwards, knocked out in the spirit. Not good in a hospital room. God had, this is how orchestrated it was. God had already told Joanna what he was revealing to me. Didn't show her, just told her. And as I went back, her hand came forward and she started to speak in tongues. Held me up until I could regain my composure. That happened three times in, in, on that visit. I finished praying, I sat down on the chair. She said, what did, what did the Lord show you? See, I, I'll tell you why it chokes me up all the time in a minute. She said, what did the Lord show you? And he did it again. And I, I lost it, completely slobbering wreck on this chair. We managed to compose it. Just, I mean, the presence of God in the room was amazing. And we left, we went down in the lift. I'm like, I can't believe that actually happened. Joanna and I are talking. I got just outside the hospital on the main street. And God went, whoop, whoop, for a third time. Five seconds every time. And I was a wreck. I managed to get back to the conference I was speaking at, managed to get home. But sometimes when the Lord gives me really deep revelations, it has like a delayed fuse on it. I can cope with it there and then. But then afterwards, the enormity of it just hits me. And I began to understand as the Lord unpacked him, totally wasted me. I mean, it was, took me months to even shake with Jacqueline what was happening, because every time I'd get close to it, I'd just break down. Just couldn't cope with it. Was that if he thought of Sophia that way, that is exactly how he felt about me. And that was just too rich. It was just too strong. This raw, pure, undiluted passion. It wasn't even love. It was just passion for me as his child. It was just overwhelming. And that was two years ago. And only now, even now I have to squash the thing. Because if I go where it hit my emotions, I'm, I'm useless. <laughs> but that's where he is with every single one of us. And you hear people say, you know I love you. And my question is, how? If they never express it, how do they know? Are they supposed to be mind readers? I know, I told you on the day I put a ring on your finger. 26 years and 12, 22 days for us. No, I tell her every day, sometimes multiple times in a day. 
What we see and what we hear tells us of a person's love. You see, the thing with Jacqueline was Luke 6.45, out of the heart the mouth speaks. See, I'd already thought that, wow, she's hot. She is absolutely stunning. She's outside my league, all of this stuff. So when I get to the literature table, it doesn't come through my brain. Out of my heart, the mouth says, should we go together? And my brain then catches up with my heart and says, oh, no. If you never express love verbally, it's questionable whether it's in your heart. When was the last time, and when was the last time I expressed it? Well, I married you and I'm still here. I've heard that one said. I have to tell you, I wanted to kill the guy that said it on behalf of his wife. I told Bob, well, I married you and I'm still here. I buy you gifts. Whoa, time out on that one. In a materialistic world, gifts are no substitute for I love you. Ask any girl in the room. They will sacrifice all the gifts that are given to them for one I love you coming from the heart. See, girls, I've learned something. She's a really good teacher. Well, I send you text messages or emails. Doesn't do it, girls, does it? Oh, you're really quiet well, today. I'm still here. See, Jacqueline, this is why we have, we have all these gadgets that we fly around the world with, like Skype phones and, and everything. You know, it's because she, she, she's... She, want, she doesn't want to email people. She wants to hear their voice. She wants to talk to them and maintain a relationship with them by, by voice. We were, God didn't design us with two TV screens, two computer screens to receive emails and SMS messages. He gave us ears so that we can hear somebody say, I love you. Now let me say this. It's not that what you know is the depth of your love, it's what the other person knows. Any child will tell you that. If a parent goes to a child and says, you know I love you, every it's not important that you know you love them, it's important they know you love them. And every single person has a different love language. Jacqueline and I happen to be very tactile people. But not everybody is. I, I, sp I spent years with a pastor's wife, who, who, and it took him ages and ages and ages, because he's tactile and she's not. She has this servant heart. So if he says, oh, where's this? You know, I, I can't find my, my keys. And she's like, it's like Mission Impossible. You know, your mission, should you, desire, should you wish to... To accept it, find his keys, and she's off. That's her love language. Serving. And it, and it caused tension. Now, let, let me deal with this one, okay? I, I can't move everything. It's alright, I'll stay where I am. I can't move everything. But in one of the earlier classes, we, we had this, this ginger line on the carpet as, as the cross and the blood. And over here was the prison of law, and over here was the prison of love. And that's redemption. Sorry, of, 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 of righteousness. Thank you. Uh, this prison of righteousness, which is love and grace and all of that stuff. And we talked about this. And, and, and we're moved into this, into this place. We know the Father loves us because the Bible tells us so. We've got his love letter. I'm going to play you scripture in, at the end of this. We know Jesus loved us because he's, he came and died for us. But, but both are outward expressions of love. And, and, and guys, let, let me say this. It doesn't stop when you've got a ring on their finger. Just because you've caught them doesn't mean it's over. It, it, it's just... I'm constantly doing that. Now, if that's sin and law, this is love. So out of love for her, not law, I do things. It, would drive, it drove her mad. 
So out of love, I now put all my dirty clothes in the laundry basket. <laughs> 